Hi everyone, welcome to episode 7. So today we're going to be continuing our work on the moving platforms. So the first sort of order of business is to get our passengers constraining to collisions while they're on a moving platform. Um, at the moment, if I just put an obstacle over here, you can see it just goes straight through it. And the reason for this, of course, is quite simply that uh, we're moving our passengers with transform.translate uh, when in reality we'd really like to be moving them with our controller 2D move function. So um, before we just go and start replacing all of these with controller 2D.move, we need to ask the question, do we want to move our passengers before or after we move the actual platform? Now to answer this question, let's uh, look at two scenarios quickly. Say in the first scenario, the platform is moving down and our passenger is standing on top of the platform and we move our passenger first. So we move the passenger down by the platform's velocity and it collides with the platform and stops moving and then next the platform moves down um, and we've got a gap in between the two. So obviously that's not correct. Um, so then we'd want to move the platform first and then the player, that makes sense. But what if the platform is moving up? Now if we move the platform first, and say it moves a lot in one frame, suddenly the player is stuck and the player essentially falls through the platform. So the answer to the question is really, it depends on which direction the platform is moving. So let's go back into our platform controller script. And uh, what we wanna do is we no longer want to actually move our our passengers in, in the move passenger method, which we're going to now rename to something more appropriate like calculate passenger movement. And we're going to create a new function. Um, let's call this move passengers. And this is going to take an a bool before move platform. And what we'll do is we'll call that once before we actually move the platform. So we'll say move passengers true. And once afterwards, move passengers false. So instead of moving the passengers here, we want to actually store the passenger movement so that it can be um, performed inside of the move passenger method. So let's create a struct for storing all of the relevant information. We can call this uh, passenger movement, I guess. And this will contain a public transform for the transform of the passenger, a public vector three for the desired velocity of the passenger. Um, we'll want a public bool for whether or not our passenger is actually standing on the platform. Um, so we can just call that, I guess, standing on platform. And finally, a public bool for whether or not we must move the passenger before the platform is moved. So let's create a public constructor, so public passenger movement, and it will take in each of these, so transform, we can call it underscore transform, vector three underscore velocity bool underscore standing on platform and the last one bool underscore move before platform and now we just need to assign all of these transform equals underscore transform uh, velocity equals underscore velocity standing on platform equals underscore standing on platform and lastly move before platform equals underscore move before platform all right we've got all of them so now let's create a list to store all of that in. So list of passenger movement, we can just call this our uh, passenger movement, I guess. And each time we calculate the passenger movement, we want to set passenger movement equal to a new list of passenger movement. So now we want to replace each of these uh, transform.translates with um, adding a new passenger movement to the passenger movement list. So we can say passenger movement dot add new passenger movement. And now we want to pass in 
all of the variables. So for the transform, that would be hit.transform. For the velocity, that would be a new vector 3 um, with push x and push y. Then we want to know if the passenger is standing on the platform. Now this is a vertically moving platform and the way we've set it up in the last episode is so that if it's moving up we'll cast rays up and thus obviously if it, if it hits a passenger that means that the passenger is standing on the platform and if the platform is moving down then the rays are cast downwards and uh, thus if it hits a passenger that means the passenger is below the platform. So for this bull here it can be true if the direction y is equal to 1. All right, and finally, do we want the passenger to move before or after the platform? Well, if it's moving up, we obviously want, as I explained earlier, for the passenger to move first. And the same goes if the passenger is below the platform and the platform is moving down. So in this case, that will be true. All right, let's copy that and replace this one over here as well. Um, of course, we need to think about these two variables again. So uh, this is a horizontally moving platform. So this means the passenger is being pushed from the side. So it's impossible that we're standing on the platform. So we set that to false. And we always want this to move before. Um, the last one to replace is over here. And in this case, we've said the passenger is on top, so uh, this can be true. And this is a horizontally or downward moving platform, and if it's horizontal, we don't mind which one goes first. And uh, if it's downward, then we want the platform to move first, so we'll set that to false. All right, so now just to test if this works or not, let's do a rough implementation of our move passengers method. So let's say for each passenger movement which we can call passenger in passenger movement. If passenger dot move before platform is equal to before move platform, then let's just say passenger dot transform dot get component of type controller 2D dot move with the passenger dot uh, velocity. All right, let's see if that's working. So upward movement still seems to be working. Let's uh, shift F to follow and just increase the speed. Downward movement still seems to be working. And as you saw there, it collided with the uh, with the obstacle. So that's good. Um, Let's rotate this and put that here. I'm going to make this move sideways. Let's try that. Cool, that works. And let's try one where it's being pushed from the side. That also works. So our implementation is basically working. Um, there are two concerns. The first is that we're doing a lot of get component calls and as far as optimization goes, that's not the best thing in the world. The other thing is that um, if we now, uh, let, me, let me change this to a upward moving platform. In a number of cases, we can no longer jump. And this is because the passenger is being told that it's moving upwards, so it's detecting collisions above it, and it doesn't actually know that it's standing on something. So this is where that variable standing on platform comes in, because uh, in our controller 2D, um, in the move method, we're going to add in a bool standing on platform. And by default, we'll set this equal to false. But um, if standing on platform is true, then we can say collisions.below is equal to true. So now when we move our passengers, we'll also pass in passenger.standing on platform. And now we're once again able to jump. 
All right, so now for the first issue I mentioned with uh, reducing the number of get component calls, what we can do is we can create a dictionary. So let's create a dictionary and we'll take in a transform as its key and a controller 2D as its value and we can call this our passenger dictionary and we can just set this equal to a new dictionary and now what we'll do is when we move the passengers we first want to check if we already have the passenger contained in our dictionary so if passenger dictionary dot contains key passenger dot transform well rather we want to say if it does not contain the the passenger then we want to add the passenger to the dictionary so passenger dictionary dot add and the key will be the passenger transform and the value will be passenger dot transform dot get component controller whoops controller 2d and having done that now instead of getting the component we can simply say passenger dictionary with a key of passenger dot transform move so by doing this we're ensuring that we only do one get component call per passenger okay now i've actually just remembered uh, two other little things that we need to quickly address the one is uh, similar to well very similar to the error that we had before where the player was unable to jump uh, except this time it's if we are being pushed from the side that we are unable to jump and the reason for this is that uh, if we go down to where the horizontal moving platforms are being handled you can see that the push y is set to zero which means that the passenger is never checking below itself and thus is not aware that it's actually on the ground so if we can just add a small downward force just something like negative skin width will do the trick then this error should disappear okay cool uh, the other thing is if we have a platform coming down and sort of crushing our player from above the way we've set it up is that the platform will just sort of move through the player as if it's in front of it or if you wanted you could uh, change the z value and make it go behind it whatever you prefer but the point is that when it's inside of the player like this then our movement on the x-axis becomes a little bit uh, strange as I'll show here you can see I, I have immense difficulty moving and the reason for this is that in our controller 2d method where we're doing horizontal collision checks if we're inside of a collision then our hit distance is going to be equal to zero and then if it's equal to zero where we're setting the uh, velocity you can see that the velocity will be equal to negative skin width multiplied by direction x resulting in a small amount of movement in the direction opposite to the input so what we'll do is we'll say if the hit dot distance is equal to zero then we want to continue in other words just skip ahead to the next ray and use that to determine the collisions all right so if we play now uh, we should see that this issue has been resolved cool so that's everything for this episode and i'll see you in the next one cheers